Welcome to Eli Missionary Baptist Church. It's a privilege and a pleasure to have you watching us here on YouTube. Brothers and sisters, we're about to go into our morning worship service. And today, I'm speaking from Numbers, the 21st chapter, looking at a few verses there. The whole text is from 4 to 9. However, I'll be preaching on from 7 to 9. And just deals with the children of Israel and how they murmured against Moses against God because of the manna, because of the water that the Lord was providing. For the Lord sent fiery serpents in their midst. Those fiery serpents bit them unto the point of death. But the people cried out to Moses and asked Moses to intercede with God for them. Moses intercede on their behalf. And the Lord told Moses to make a brass serpent and to put it in the midst of the people. And when they looked at the serpent, they would live. Brothers and sisters, that sounds so simple, doesn't it? And that really is the title today. Just that simple. Really simple. All I've got to do is look at a serpent and live. All I've got to do is just look up and live. That's really what Moses told them to do. And it's just what God tells us to do. All we have to do is call his name and we shall be saved. Really? Is that simple? I don't have to buy it. I don't have to pay money for it. Not millions of dollars. Just simply ask God to save me and I'm saved. It's just that simple. So as we're about to enter into the worship service, I pray you will join us as we seek to study God's Word. Thank you so very much. God bless. from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass, that every one that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass, and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass, that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. May God have a blessing to the reading and hearing of his holy word. Right. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we pray that for the next few moments that you give us preaching power, yes. that we might be able, O oh God, to preach your word. I pray that Sean Evans might decrease, O oh God, that you might increase and have your way. Lord God, not my words, but that it be your words that come from the ethereal realms of glory. I pray that Sean Evans might decrease, that Jesus Christ, you might increase and have your way in this place today. 
This is thy servant's prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. For the next few moments, I want to lift up for a thought. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. All right. It's not that complicated, my brothers and sisters. It's really just that simple. Sometimes some things sound too good to be true, but sometimes it's really just that simple. Children of Israel were in the midst of their wandering in the desert. Uh, the way is hard, and they are getting tired of eating that manna that comes from above. Can I talk for a moment? Now, manna was a food that was specially provided by the Lord that took care of their every nutritional need. Here they were journeying some 40 years through the desert. And we all know what the desert is. The desert is a place where nothing grows. The desert is a place where we can hardly find food, much less water. But the Lord took care of their every need. He didn't cause food to grow in the desert, but he did allow manna to fall from heaven every day. Ah, oh, the manna, the manna was good. It provided for all of their nutritional need. It even had a particularly nice taste to it. Can I get a witness? But they got tired of eating the same thing in, day in, and day out. Y'all ain't gonna play with me. It'd be nice to have some filet mignon, but you wouldn't want to eat it every day. Amen. Tell the truth and shame the devil. You would get tired as well. They got tired of their food and they complained and they grumbled. They complained because of the food that there was no variety for all these years. The Lord keeps sending manna every day. Couldn't he send some square? Couldn't he send, y'all pray with me. Couldn't the Lord send something else? They complained because of the water. They complained because of the fact that water wasn't readily available. They couldn't just go and run and get water. Every now and then, Moses had to speak to the rock and water would come forth. Can I get a witness? They complained because of the direction Moses was leading them in. And I, I would say, my brothers and sisters, we would complain as well. If a journey that should have taken 11 days took 40 years, we might have complained as well. Perhaps Moses needed a GPS. Perhaps Moses needed somebody to give him a guide. But they seemed to be following this cloud by day and fire by night. And it seemed to lead them over and over and over and over again in the same direction. Talk, Reverend. They murmured, they complained, they grumbled, they complained again, they murmured again, they grumbled again. God says now in the text, enough is enough. I'm tired of your complaining. I provide for you and you still complain. I give you new manna every morning and you still complain. I wake you up and you still complain. I put food on the table. I put shelter over you. I protect you and you still complain. God said enough. Is enough. I'm yes, tired Lord. of all these folk. Yes, so he sends poisonous snakes into the camp to bite the people. The Bible calls them fiery serpents. Uh -huh. There was a conscience of their sin. This was a consequence of their sin. They had complained against God and God had grown weary of their complaint. Many were dying from the snake bites. And all would die if something dramatic did not occur. So Moses hears them cry out for help. Moses goes to God and pleads for, the, for God to help them. This shows you the kind of love that Moses had for the people. Because even though the people were complaining and grumbling and murmuring, they were complaining and grumbling and murmuring about Moses. But Moses goes to God and said, God, do not kill your people. Have mercy upon them. Because Moses loved God's people. That's why God had chosen Moses to be the leader. Because he knew that Moses had a love for the people. 
He wanted them to see salvation, not horrible death. So now let's look at some spiritual application from this text for our lives. The first thing I want to tell everybody is that sinners staying sinful face certain death. I'm going to say it again. Sinners staying sinful face certain death. Here's what the Bible said. The Bible said, listen to this, my brothers and sisters, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We are all sinners in this house. Don't let nobody fool you. My stuff stinks and your stuff stinks as well. We are all sinners in the house of God. Ain't nobody more perfect than another. I can't cast stones at your house because I will have my own house broken up. If a person in the text was guilty of mumbling and murmuring, of backbiting, and every person in the text was bitten by a serpent. Who knew who was guilty and who was not? I came to tell you that God knew. You can't fool God. There is no fooling God. God knows who's saved and who's, come on here. God knows who's telling the truth and who's a lie. God knows who's forming a fool in church, who's cutting up, who's acting up. God knows. You can fool man, but you can't fool God. You can trick man, but you can't trick God. I don't care how early you get up in the morning. You can't trick God. God already knows. How many have sinned? All have sinned. The Bible says, For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. I came to tell you, we are all sinners. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so death passeth upon all men, for that all have sinned. We are all sinners. The Bible is clear. The wages of sin is death. Sinners staying sinful face certain death. Staying complaining will get you in trouble. Staying complaining will get you in trouble. First of all, my brothers and sisters, if you're always complaining, you are in danger of developing a negative persona. Amen. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't like to be around negative folk. I want some positive sometime. I'm sick and tired of people. They're always complaining. They complain about the bacon. They complain how you pay with it. They complain about the hay. They complain how you woke up. They complain what you wear. I'm tired of negative folk. If you stay negative, you go. Negativity will kill you. Negativity will lead you to an early grave. Every now and then, you got to look at the glass and say, you know what, it's not half empty, but it's half full. Every now and then, you got to have something positive about yourself. People don't want to be around sour pussies all the time. People don't want to be around people sucking on lemons. Come on, somebody. Every now and then, we want some lemonade. Staying complaining will get you in trouble. Uh -huh. Don't miss it, my brothers and sisters. But murmuring makes me miss my blessing. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, somebody. I said murmuring makes me miss my blessing. Because you're too busy complaining about what you don't have. You don't even see what you do have. So what you can't hardly lift up the arm and leave you woke up this morning on this side of the world. Every time I turn around, God keeps on 
pass you by. You so busy complaining, you miss your blessing. Story was told about a man who had a serious relationship with God. All right. And God, God talked with him, and he talked with God, and there was a sudden uh, tsunami, a sudden storm, a sudden whatever you want to call it that hit. And so God promised to deliver him. And he believed God. And so when the state troopers came out and told him we're here, he said, no, God going to rescue me. And when the waters flooded even to his house and the boat came by, he said, God going to rescue me. And even as he got to his rooftop and the helicopters came by, he said, God going to rescue me. He died and went to heaven and asked God, God, you promised to rescue me. God said, I said, a trooper. I said, a boat. And I said, a helicopter. What more do you need? I came to tell somebody up in here, up in here. Holy Ghost. Every person that's trying to get to heaven without repentance, God understand that will receive a judgment for God instead of salvation. Yes, sir. The fact of the matter is, you can't get to heaven without the salvation plan. Right. It's just that simple. Yeah. Here it is. Salvation is a simple plan. Realize that you are a sinner and that you need a savior. Too many people will allow their foolish pride to send them to a burning hell. They just refuse to admit that they are sinners. But my brothers and my sisters, I want you to understand that salvation is free, but it's not cheap. You ain't gonna pray with me. It's free, but it's not cheap. It came with a price. Jesus paid it all, and all to him I owe. You ain't gonna pray with me. It may be free, but it's not cheap. It came at the price of God's only son. You ain't gonna pay with me, but it's freely offered because Jesus said, whosoever will, let him come. And so there's only three things you ought to do in order to get salvation. It's just as simple. You've got to be willing to change. You've got to ask. And if you need it, you snake bites because they told Moses, oh come on. How could just looking at a brass serpent help me? Many died because they wouldn't believe. But my brothers and sisters, there are many are going to hell each day because they don't believe the Bible formula for salvation. It's simple. It, come on, somebody. It can't be that easy. It can't be that easy. I will tell you, it is not easy and it is not cheap. But cheap, come on, somebody. But it is that simple. The Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. And with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I came to tell somebody it's just that simple. If you call upon the Lord, you shall be saved. It's just that simple. If you believe in the Lord, you shall. Moses, Moses. Showed a great example of love and mercy. Although the people had murmured time and time again against him, he still loved them. He never has a go to hell attitude. Come on, somebody. 
And a go to hell attitude should not be found in the child of God. Every ounce of our strength, every resource that we have, every emotional fabric of our body should be used in winning the lost and seeing them saved from the devil's hell. We have got to reach out unto the lost. I'm done when I say this here. We got to step out on our faith that God can use us. Yes, he can to save those that are lost. Trust God that he will make us witnesses for him. Pray for braveness and boldness to share his word. Pray for opportunities so that you can share your testimony. Pray for opportunities where you can share your faith. Pray for your family and your friends that need Jesus. Come on, somebody. We all know someone who needs the Lord. People need a savior. People need a deliverer. People need a comforter. People need a hope giver. People need a peacemaker. People need yes they do. A provider. I came to tell you that Jesus.
Let's snatch her off, please.